this is again very important let us try to understand the management part when we part when we talk about the management there are two components what are the two components one is the dynamic repair one is the dynamic repair and one is the static repair static repair and the dynamic repair what is the difference the dynamic repair is the repair where actually you are re-establishing the nervous or you can say nerve conduction pathway yes so this is nerve conduction pathway is re-established and in fact this is the most important part but you cannot ignore even the static repair also so first let us see the dynamic repairs what are the options in dynamic repairs the first thing that you have to understand in dynamic repair is nerve graft you have the option of the nerve graft so when you talk about the nerve graft what are the options the best nerve graft that we have is your sural nerve you can use a sural nerve i've already discussed the others are you can use a greater auricular in fact the greater auricular is the most commonly used because it is routinely sacrificed during surgery so greater auricular so we have greater auricular nerve graft you can use even hypoglossal nerve hypoglossal nerve yes you can use auricular temporal nerve you can use auricular temporal nerve also so lot of nerves can be used lot of nerves can be used so this is the nerve graft which is actually the most promising option that we have otherwise we can use a neurovascular muscle graft neurovascular neurovascular muscle graft now this neurovascular muscle graft can be of two types it can be a pedicled graft it can be a free graft so pedicled graft if you talk about pedicle graft you can use that temporalis the temporalis you can bring to masseter so this is very important so temporalis muscle graft so temporalis and temporalis is brought over the masseter so temporalis to masseter and then you can have a free what is free you will take out the muscle and you will go for the microvascular anastomosis in that case so we have a free we have a this uh, the pedicle when you talk about the free then you take the gracilis from the lower extremity so gracilis gracilis neuromuscular graft gracilis neuromuscular graft so these are the dynamic grafts that we have again again one one more strategy which is which has been used is you can use the cross facial implantation so this side the nerve has been destroyed we can we can use the less dominant nerves or less useful nerves and we can bring the sensation from the opposite side to this side and that is what is the next that we can have is a cross implantation of the facial nerve onto the contralateral side so cross implantation cross implantation of facial nerve of facial nerve and how do we do this the normal side facial nerve we utilize the contralateral side normal facial nerve and with the less prominent branches of the affected side we get this sensation back onto the desired side so this is what is cross implantation of the facial nerve so if we talk about the surgeries we have two types of surgeries we have dynamic repairs and we have static repairs now in dynamic repairs i have discussed them that we can use a nerve graft we can use a neurovascular muscle graft that could be either a pedicle graft or a free graft or it could be a static repair when we talk about static repair what is the intention of static repair like dynamic repair the intention was to reinstate the neural conduction pathway but if we talk about the static repair it is not that same the static repair aims at the protection of the body due to the defects which have occurred like here if you see the epiphora continuous tearing we do a medial canthus reconstruction since the upper eyelid is open always open there is a wide palpable fissure there is a risk of uh, conjunctival ulcers or you can say keratitis so we need to do something and that is why we do a lateral tarsoraphy we put a gold slings we might put a gold slings on the upper eyelid so that the weight allows it to fall down yes and then 
there is a drooping of angle so we just put a sling temporal uh, temporal facial sling so that we can attach it to the zygomatic process and we can put it up so cosmetic reconstruction and protection to the important parts of eye is the main aim of giving a static repair so let us see what are the things that we do we do a lateral tarso raffi we do a lateral tarso raffi and why we do a lateral tarso raffi to protect this body to protect the eye from the uh, corneal ulcer so to prevent corneal ulcer so to prevent corneal ulcer you are going to go for this again you go for medial canthus reconstruction so medial canthus reconstruction we are going for medial canthus reconstruction when we talk about medial canthus reconstruction what is the aim the aim is to decrease the epiphora to decrease to decrease epiphora then what else do we have so to decrease epiphora we do this then i have told you about the drooping yes the drooping angle we can go for the temporal facial sling temporal facial sling and what is this temporal facial sling going to do so this is going to yes we are going to suspend the angle via zygomatic process so suspension of angle of mouth suspension of angle of mouth from the zygoma from zygoma this is what so zygomatic arch or you can say zygoma so these are some important things that we can do that uh, implant gold implant gold weight implantation gold weight implants on the upper eyelid or on implants on eyelid uh, this is done by few but not advocated for every patient but yes medial canthus reconstruction and uh, this uh, lateral tarso raffi they are very 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 important very important so now we go to one more very important complication and this will be the last thing that we discuss in salivary glands that is fray syndrome subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from prep ladder